Hi everyone, my name is Natalie Trong and I'm the CMO of EY in Oceania. Lovely to have you here, Natalie, in our CMO chats. Uh, can you share us what does your company do? Uh, thanks for the opportunity, uh, Sabrina, and thanks for joining everyone. There's three things that we we do uh, from an organisational perspective. We're a global services firm uh, with 400,000 people, and our purpose is to build a better working world. We do really cool work like helping clients fight data privacy, guiding governments through cash flow uh, crisis, and then we also help health professionals to unlock medical treatments with data analytics um, we try and <laughs> pursue, you know, high quality audits to help build trust in the financial markets and business. Um, and then very cool thing we do is we've recently invested significantly in our AI capabilities. We spent 1.4 billion US dollars in the investment we've made um, in AI and, and trying to integrate that into our proprietary technologies to help our clients and our people. Wow, AI is really the way to go. And, you know, as the CMO or Chief Marketing Officer in your company, what is currently your main marketing focus? Oh, great question, Sabrina. I, I probably spend my days um, thinking about three things, if I'm honest with you. I think about people and talent. I think about do we have, you know, the right capabilities in the team? Do we have the right culture? What skills are we missing to continue to provide value to the business? So people and culture is incredibly important to me. Uh, I also spend my days thinking about brand and reputation management. Um, with the launch of our new global brand refresh, uh, which is all about shaping the future with confidence, how do we think about that um, for our people? How do we get, how do we help them build pride? How do we help them understand what that means for, for our organization? Then how do we help deliver on that confidence for our clients? And then I think about the go-to-market campaigns. You know, are we hitting the right audience with the right messages, using the right channels at the right times? Or are we actually just spray gunning um, and just, you know, hoping and praying that our campaigns are hitting the mark? There's a lot of analysis that goes behind these campaigns. And since now we're on the topic of campaigns, I specifically wanted to, you know, ask, can you tell me about a particularly innovative or successful marketing campaign um, your team has recently executed? Yeah, wow. That's going to be like picking my favorite child, Serena. So that's a bit tough. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. Let me talk to you about uh, the education campaign, which I think has been our most successful campaign so far in the last 12 months. But it's also been one I'm really proud of. Um, I'm really proud of it because it was us for the first time bringing a whole bunch of teams together and working together right from the start instead of sometimes marketers go off forget about the social people or the PR people and the comms people or the data people and then they get to a point in their campaign and they go oh my goodness we haven't engaged our PR team or we haven't engaged our digital team uh, which is uh, really bad but right from the start this campaign was all about teaming and um, we had really strong stakeholder engagement and ownership of, of data and the roles and the responsibilities which I'm really proud of um, and I guess it, it's a reflection of the success of the campaign because so far the campaign has generated, you know, eight leads, four converted and revenue of about $6.1 million, which is a pretty good investment um, or return on the investment we had. I like what you said about, you know, really making sure everyone's involved and everyone plays a big piece of the puzzle to make this more a successful um, initiative. So now since we're looking at the success, I want to ask you, what are your biggest uh, marketing challenges at the moment? <laughs> I'll go back to my first point I think I made around yeah. what are the things that keep me, uh, you know, awake at night or what am I thinking mm -hmm. about, Sabrina? People and talent. Um, it's absolutely critical we get the right people um, in the right roles. Otherwise, you can have all the money in the world um, and your campaigns will fail or the brand and reputation of your company will fail if you don't have the right people and the right talent in your team. I think uh, the other marketing challenge is AI. Uh, how do we add it to the marketing toolkit to enhance the client journey? H how do we use AI? How do we... People, you know, are quite fearful of AI and thinking, oh, my God, it's going to make me redundant. But that's absolutely not the case. I think you'll be redundant as a marketer if you're not using AI. Uh, so I think marketers should learn to use AI. It's a great ideation tool. 
Um, and it definitely won't replace you. We will always need human intervention, but I think it's critical that marketers, brand, digital, all our people should be looking to use AI. And then I think the third thing for me in terms of the biggest challenge is trying to raise the bar on creativity. How do we break outside the mold of professional services? Very conservative, very risk adverse. Actually, how do we be a little different and show that um, it's an incredible place to work. That's why we've managed to attract 400,000 people. And then how do we break outside of that mold um, to create a place where people want to come and work uh, for and with us? So how does your company stay ahead of its competitors in terms of marketing? Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a big debate amongst our team, if I'm honest with you, um, Sabrina. We, we try not to look sideways. Um, and that's not out of arrogance or anything. We, we try not to look sideways um, because in all honesty, I think we're all kind of doing the same things in the professional services firm, which is why we try not to look sideways too much. We really try and look to other industries, other sectors to see what's happening there. What are they doing that's quite creative from a marketing or a brand perspective? Um, because professional services is so conservative we're always, you know, thinking how can we shake things up a bit in the industry and with the go-to-market approach, we we have the freedom, I think, and, and EY Oceania, one of the benefits of, of being, um, and this is one of the benefits why I joined EY Oceania, is the ability to actually shake it up a bit in this industry because our, our industry at the moment, especially in Australia and New Zealand, is being shaken up and we can't stay still. So... Um, yeah, we're trying not to look sideways, trying to look uh, for, for inspiration from our um, friends across different sectors and industries. Yeah, I, I love that answer. Totally. Uh, taking inspiration of, of things and using that as like good energy in terms of how do we make things different? How do we stand out in that sense? I love that answer. Um, and, you know, in, in your opinion, uh, what does the future of marketing look like for you? I think um, uh, I'll go back to my point on AI, Sabrina, because I've spoken to too many marketers and, you know, I was at a roundtable, um, a CMO roundtable last week where only two, three of us were using AI. So the biggest opportunity for marketers or CMOs today is to leverage the advanced data analytics and AI. I think it 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 will help us drive highly personalized and targeted um, campaigns. And, and I think unlike in the past, Sabrina, where today's CMOs can harness, you know, all this data, like I think about our EYQ program, which is our, um, our own LM, LLM, and then I think about GPT, you can throw a document into those machines and ask them to summarize and it, it'll, you know, generate insights for you that, some of us would take days to read or some of us would take days to figure out what are those insights. So CMO should absolutely be using those tools to harness, you know, all that data and gain a really deep um, insights into customer behavior, into preferences, into trends. It allows us to be, I think, more precise in our segmentation, Sabrina, and, and then also to tailor that content so that we can enhance the customer engagement and conversion rates. You know, the, the integration of AI and machine learning tools um, enables us to make real-time decisions, in my opinion, and, and automation of marketing processes significantly, I think, improves the marketing process and, and efficiency and effectiveness. So I think overall, if we can allow or if we can encourage more of our CMOs and marketers to use a data-driven approach, I think it will create more impact um, for our campaigns and also will resonate more, which leads to um, business growth, which is why we're here, isn't it, is to help grow our business. You know, I, I couldn't have uh, heard that better or said it better. That, that was really nice. Uh, being able to see how... Um, you know, AI is and it will probably be a permanent part of, part of the future and um, how leaders are now opening their eyes into its use. It's, it's definitely something to look out for. Um, and now since we're talking about the role of a marketing leader, what is the role of the CMO for you in one word and why? Only one word. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's a strategist, um, Sabrina, if I'm honest. I think 
the the CMO's role is to craft and execute, you know, comprehensive marketing brand digital strategies that that align with our our business goals. It drives the brand growth, um, and then it adapts to the changing market dynamics. So you have to be a good strategist. Obviously, you have to be able to execute really well too. But um, if you're executing without a strategy, that then you're kind of just running blind. So I think a, a a great CMO is a great strategist. And it's also knowing the people that, you know, are with you with uh, um, and also the people that you're doing these strategies for. Uh, a lot of it is really knowing um, the bigger picture in that sense. Uh, so my last question for you, Natalie, is what career advice would you like to share with other marketing leaders out there and maybe even ones that are listening to uh, this podcast right now? Gosh, I... Um... You know, I, I am quite old compared to a lot of you guys. You're quite young. And, and I guess I'm straddling traditional marketing advice versus, you know, how you should move forward these days. So for me, I think modern marketers, um, you no longer should stick to what always has worked in the past. I think it's for important for you to acknowledge what's happened in the past, Sabrina, acknowledge the tools and the, the, the strategies that worked in the past. But I think in a rapidly evolving landscape of marketing, you know, consumer behaviours, technology, they're constantly changing. And if you only rely on what's happened in the past or what's worked in the past, I think you miss um, you, you miss the opportunity to, to be to continue to be relevant, to continue to stay on trend, and I think your brand will become obsolete. So I think a modern CMO, you know, you need to be willing to experiment and be ready to pivot when it's necessary so that you can stay, you can stay relevant and you, you can stay effective.